Hello everyone, it's Jared from Sweet Again, and I have a new version of iTween to share with all of you. Of course, this being a new version of iTween, um, it is just so radically different from the previous versions that it requires a whole new set of videos. Uh, so the first thing is setting up iTween. And uh, if you're setting up iTween for Blueprint or C++, the process, as long as you're doing it the, the automatic way through the installer, is pretty much the same. Um, all you gotta do is open up your folder that is extracted when you extract the iTween zip file and you're left with these two files uh, one is a folder that has all the iTween source and the other is an exe as an installer so if you are uh, working on a Windows computer you'll be able to use this installer to install iTween if you're working on a Mac or a Linux computer then this will not help you. You will have to install manually. Uh, so I'll go over that later in the video, how to do that. Um, but again, if you're using um, Windows, this will work great for you. If you do not trust me <laughs> to uh, not install viruses on your computer, um, then you can also install manually on Windows if you would prefer. But I can assure you that is not my game. And I have posted the entire source for the... Um, the Windows form executable that we're about to run um, on the wiki, the Epic Wiki. Uh, so you can check that out if you are not comfortable with just using EXEs uh, from random people. And you really shouldn't be comfortable with that, but in this case, maybe I'm biased, but I think you should trust me. But either way, if you want to use the executable, all you got to do is double click that bad boy and you get this cute little window. And uh, what this window shows you is a few options. First one is I'm a blue printer exclusively. The second one is I'm a C++ user or both. And these options to turn on debug messages and error messages. Um, I would recommend keeping debug messages off. They're more for me as the developer to see when objects are created and then destroyed and um, when using the parser getting uh, feedback on that. All these messages can be useful to the end user, but I really don't think they would be to you. Um, error messages, however, um, I would definitely recommend keeping that on. They will print to the screen in red and the log, letting you know when uh, there was a problem. Like if you're trying to do an actor tweeting operation, but you don't have an actor defined, or um, if you are trying to use the parameters and you type in a wrong parameter or something like that, um, this will let you know about that. So I recommend keeping those on, but you can turn those off if you prefer. So you have to uh, pop in your project path here, your UE4 project path. So you can browse for that, or you can simply um, type it in. In this case, it's going to be E unreal projects and my project BP. Now you can see here that once I typed in a valid path, the install button was made active. If I were to change the path so it's no longer a valid path, my project B is not a path that exists, um, then install is not available. As long as the path that you're typing in here has a U project file in it, such as this one, my project BP .u project, the install button will be available. And uh, if you'd like, you can just keep throwing backslashes on there or have no backslashes. It doesn't really matter because in the end, it's going to parse the same way. So if you are going to be using blueprints exclusively, this is the best option for you since it will require no building um, no compiling, nothing like that. Um, actually, that's not true. It will need to recompile, but you won't have to um, do that manually. The launcher will take care of that for you. And it will install as a plugin, so you can turn it on and off. If you are a C++ user, or you like to use C++ and Blueprints, I will go over that later. For now, let's just stick with I'm a Blueprinter exclusively. We have my project path in there. Click Install and in less than a second it is done. 
And what that does is it just creates a plugins path, plugins folder inside of your project, inside of that iTween, and inside of that, all of the iTween information. Now, two things I want to point out here. Uh, right now, we're in version 0.8 beta, or 0.8b. You can find that up here in the installer, version 0.8 beta. You can also open up your uh, U plugin by right clicking on the iTween.u plugin and then uh, open with, and you can open that with Notepad. And you can see right here, version 0.8, version name 0.8 beta. That information on the installer is taken directly from this U plugin. So if you ever need to know what version of iTween you're using, just go to the U plugin or the installer. I see that information. Now, if we start up this uh, My Project BP, let's give that a second to run. It may tell you it needs to recompile, and it also may not. In this case, it did not turn off real time to save my computer fan and if I just open up any blueprint and right click in the uh, the action bar I guess the action dialog you can see iTween inside of that we have events interface events stopping pausing and utilities and all of these now are available to call in any blueprint at any time so that's a really easy way to install uh, iTween if you are going to be using Blueprints exclusively. Now, what if you are not going to be using them exclusively and you want to use C++ or you want to use C++ and Blueprints? Well, to do that, you just have to check off this. I'm a C++ user or both. And I'm going to use a different project path for this. C auto and that stands for uh, C++ automatic installation using the installer so just uh, check off this radio button and then again click install and it will install to your source folder an iTween folder with all of the iTween source and it's not just a matter of copying the source over uh, whenever you open whenever you put source into your uh, C++ project as you know you need to have um, my project underscore API in front of every class and you need to include your project's header and uh, the installer automatically takes care of that for you so if we were to open up say itox.h you can see down here the class has added my project C auto underscore API to the class. And if we were to open up itox.cpp, we have include my project C auto dot H added automatically, thanks to the installer. Now, if you'd like to install manually, you can do that as well. And to do that, you just hop into the iTween folder inside of the uh, extracted files, head into source, iTween, and private, and copy all of those except for iTween module, CPP, and iTween module H. And just control C, head back into the project that you want to manually install to, go into your source, Go into your project name again, and then right in here, you can either paste them directly into this folder, or you can create a subfolder for it. I'm going to create a new subfolder, iTween, and paste that in. And uh, then you'll have to go through each of these manually and add after the class. Um, my project C manual underscore API 
in all caps. And I put my project C manual because that is the name of this project. Um, so I, I copied them all into my project C manual. So then when I open up each of these files in each of the header files, I need to put my project C manual underscore API. So if your project were named bananas, you just put bananas underscore API. And this needs to be done on every single line that says class and then the name of the class that inherits from a public other class. So be it a actor or a pawn, a character, doesn't matter. You have to put it on each of those. If it says class and then something else but does not inherit from another um, class, then you don't have to worry about putting that there. And then on each CPP file, you need to add include and then in quotes you put your project name my project c manual dot h now it keeps coming up with auto just because i'm in the uh, visual studio solution for auto but again i copied them into the folder for manual c manual so had to type that in myself. You can have to include that on every single .cpp. And then you're going to need to go into the PCH, which is the precompiled header, and remove the references to module, module manager, and iTween module. Then you can save that up. And then finally, you'll have to go back to your uh, my project build, your, your project's build file open that up and you're going to have to add into your private dependency modules slate slate core and UMG if you don't have these added even if you're not using iTween for UMG um, the source file still reference UMG, so you're going to end up with some build errors unless you add these to your build file. So after you have your manifest and everything set up, you can then build your uh, project. The um, best thing to do would be to right click here, generate Visual Studio project files, open up the solution, and then build. It'll take a bit to build because the, uh, the iTween event and iTween headers and source files are quite large so you're going to be waiting for a bit and finally if you would like to manually install for blueprints uh, all you have to do is create a new folder called plugins if you don't already have one and then inside of there you can just copy the iTween folder. So inside of here, you'll have your installer and this iTween folder. You just copy the iTween folder into your plugins, and there you go. Manually installed for BP. So that's it.